Welcome to this comprehensive video on what is Cool Care for, and more importantly, what Cool Care can do for your care home business. So, Cool Care for is a home administration system covering all of the core aspects of care home administration. That includes a dashboard showing home and group level aggregated data. You have an occupancy and inquiry management system allowing individuals at home or centralized, say at head office, to take inquiries and then to allocate tasks out to individuals in the individual care homes, tracking it all through a regulated and sort of standardized process for all the homes. You have staff records and HR, so you're able to hold data on the staff, their records, their history of employment, the rotors and shifts that they're working, the pay rates that they're on, the staff grades that they're on. Um, you have the rotoring and shift system as displayed on this uh, current screen here. Uh, you have time and attendance, so clocking in and clocking out, which is intelligent within Cool Care 4, which makes sure that it only pays for when people are supposed to be working uh, rather than perhaps when they arrived or when they leave, and also applies your company payrolls for breaks and absences, etc. You have staff communication via the system, so uh, you can ask individuals if they'd like to cover shifts. Uh, you can send out general messages through the system, of course, being centralized, it's all audited, etc. So you can go back through it and see uh, what messages have been sent and when they've been responded to. Um, and then you have the staff portal, which allows staff to log in to uh, their own miniature tiny version of the system to see what shifts they've been they're working in the near future or in the past, so they can check against their, their pay slips. And also they can pick up shifts and request holidays, etc. All of that data can be exported out, of course, uh, into payroll. You have resident records within the system that's keeping records of, of uh, the payers, um, the fee contracts, uh, what room individuals are in, um, ledgers for uh, extras, etc., and billable extras um, or any ad hoc uh, additional uh, expenditures. Um, you've got intelligent invoicing and finance, which is able to collate all that information and send out invoices and transfer data out to a payroll system such as Sage. And then there's also uh, a virtual notice board within the system so you can showcase your home um, and what's happening in your home on a large screen TV in reception showing exactly what's kind of going on in the home that day. So for cool care, it's extremely important that service is, a, is, is right up on top of uh, our priority list. And that's why we ensure that all our, all our clients are looked after uh, when they call in and have questions for us. Um, we then send out review requests of which people then fill out reviews, come back to us and tell us how we're doing. Um, if you'd like to have a look at the responses that our, our, uh, our current uh, clients have said about cool care, you'll see that on reviews.co.uk forward slash cool care. Uh, it's constantly moving uh, picture, but it's always a very positive one. And that's why the vast majority of, uh, of companies that sign up to Cool Care, stay with Cool Care uh, for a protracted period of time. Currently, that's sitting at a beyond 4.8 years. Finally, who is Cool Care uh, sort of, of interest to? Well, of course, it's of interest to the commercial team and the directors and managers of a care home. And if you're a director or a manager watching this uh, video, I recommend that you watch the entire video. So that's from now all the way through to the end, which is around about 56 minutes. If you're uh, HR and uh, training, if you're particularly interested in rotors um, and the payroll admin aspect, then I recommend you look at the video from minutes 12 to 43. These timings are approximate, of course. Um, and then if you're uh, uh, in front of house and you're interested in inquiries, if you're in the sales and marketing, or if you're uh, a director that's responsible for that area or a manager responsible for that area, then minutes four to 12, are probably of most of interest. Uh, invoicing and finance is towards the end of the video. So that's four, minute 43 to about 56. And then uh, if you're interested in how we actually communicate with staff via the staff portal, how that system works, um, uh, and if you're maybe perhaps a staff member and you're interested in sort of exactly what this is supposed to do, then minutes 20 to 28 should cover that all. Um, overall, what we have here is a, a one-stop shop system, uh, which is Cool Care, uh, secure, online, cloud-hosted, uh, accessible from any uh, web-enabled device, allowing uh, with the right user privileges, all members of the team to be able to access this type of data um, to better run the home in a more efficient manner. And let's have a look at the system itself. 
Coolcare is accessible from any web-enabled device. I'm using Chrome on a PC, and you log in via the web page, which is coolcare4.com, and it immediately comes up with the dashboard. Now, the dashboard is the way in which Coolcare keeps on top of all the different metrics that a particular user would find of interest. Now, the dashboard is configurable simply by clicking on this button here. You can reorder the dashboard. Um, you can take uh, various elements off the dashboard that are not applicable to your job role. So depending on what you do in a job, you may or may not be interested in each and every one of these widgets. I've set the system up in a more of a general view of the home that a manager, perhaps an owner might find of interest um, and the feedback given back to us to say, these are the kind of things that I want to know about if I'm running the home. So we have occupancy up here and it's currently displaying the occupancy of this specific home. And this is Oak House as a home. If, for example, I wanted to look at all of these uh, pieces of data um, from a group perspective, I can click on group and it will aggregate the information and show it to me again in a pie chart and all of this data is aggregated. Um, clicking on the breakdown button, I can see the individual houses um, and that was Oak House I was in earlier, 93.44% occupancy. You can see there's other, other houses and cottages and homes need more work uh, in order to increase that occupancy. So if I go back to the home, I can now look at it from a manager's perspective of this home. I can see the average fees, total inquiries uh, and total waiting list. So that's giving me an idea of what's happening in relation to my occupancy. Here I have my staff on shift versus rotor. So the system's intelligently saying, we're expecting certain people, we were not expecting other people. The green tick says, I was expecting you. Um, the AWOL says, you're supposed to be here, but you're not. And the red X's are saying, um, you're in, but I wasn't expecting you to be in. Now, bear in mind that this is a demo system, so there aren't actually people clocking in and out. Um, you wouldn't normally anticipate to see so many AWOLs and so many red crosses, um, but it does give you a good illustration. I've also got inquiries on here of my tasks to do in relation to inquiries. I've got a, a list of recently added inquiries. And at any point with the system, if you're unsure of what it means, just hover over the um, little uh, information button and it'll tell you what those widgets do. I've got hours of worked versus budgeted for um, the last period, which is the 30th of June. Uh, I can see that we're kind of, uh, uh, you know, we haven't got uh, as many worked hours as we were expecting. Again, a demo system. I've got calendar actions, so people make requesting holidays and absence. I've got absent residents, so the system's keeping on top of that. I've got planned admissions, uh, and it's red, so it's overdue, so somebody who's supposed to be admitted, but don't seem to have been. Uh, I've got staff appraisals. I've got some quick buttons here, which some people do like to put high up on the system. Uh, I've just got them here for reference. I've got a training and compliance, which we'll go into a little bit more detail, but we can see exactly what's going on in relation to staff needing uh, certain courses to, to, to complete. Uh, and if I wanted to look by qualification, I can see exactly what's happening with a particular qualification. So for example, dementia awareness, there's 10 people that are supposed to be doing it um, and they're not booked yet. I've got uh, upcoming residents' birthdays. At the end of the day, it's a computer system. It can give us reminders. DBS pin and expiries, staff visa expiries, resident visa expiries down here, um, incomplete probations. Uh, and so these are all very sort of HR and CQC and compliance related uh, widgets. Um, if you're in finance, you probably wouldn't have these activated, um, but vice versa, there's certain finance things related that you wouldn't necessarily need if you're just purely dealing with HR. Uh, you've got monthly hours, so it's a total of what happened last month versus this month, and then we have remaining holiday outstanding. So that's very useful for managers. Often this is quite high up on the list, but it's also very useful for finance and um, the accountants of the organization as ultimately um, large amounts of holiday can become a liability. That's the dashboard. Um, and then what we're going to do next is we're going to click in and look at a little bit more detail on inquiry management. So next up, we're going to look at inquiry management. This is relevant for staff members who work on, on the front of house, who answer the telephone, uh, deal with inquiries. Perhaps a centralized sales and marketing team could be head office, 
course, the commercial team are always interested in occupancy and inquiry management, but also it can be uh, staff members who are involved in the admission process and uh, the assessment process. So let's have a look at inquiry management. There are a number of easy one-click ways of getting into inquiry management from the dashboard. I can click on upcoming inquiry tasks that have been allocated to me as a user. I've got a new inquiry added here, or alternatively, I can go into the main inquiry management page. Here I've got an overview of the home's occupancy. So we're still in Oak House. Um, we've got the overall occupancy, percentage of private, uh, and then the breakdown of diff different funding types, and an overview of where the inquiries are up to. I have a to-do list here, so I've got two jobs I'm supposed to have actioned because they've gone red, they must be overdue. And I've also got um, an overdue list of uh, total in, uh, inquiries and things that need to be dealt with um, as soon as possible. I can, of course, look at the group level data um, of which we've got all of the inquiries of all the houses aggregated together, displaying a total at the top here and then a breakdown. Again, total inquiries ongoing. Uh, etc. So popping back to the home, I'm able to see my to-do list. So here I've got a brochure to be provided. Um, and in the in, in specific inquiry itself, I've got uh, the prospective resident, I've got the contact, I've got funding type has not yet been uh, captured. Um, we've got the residency type and permanency and the care type. Um, we have milestones such as the, when the initial inquiry happened, um, ongoing sort of brochure needs to be dealt with. I've not, I've not dealt with that yet. Uh, a visit, an assessment, an admission. I've got a contact log, which is filterable, so I can filter it by any of the milestones, uh, looking for various bits of information. You can add notes, etc., etc. I'm also able to export these if I want to put them onto paper and deal with it. Um, and then I can add entries and do more actions on this inquiry. Now, the key thing here is that Overall, uh, the, the analysis that we've done um, with our existing customers in January 2020 tells us that each month that, uh, that homes have the inquiry management system, they have net increases in overall occupancy. They're able to achieve 4% above average uh, on number of private uh, residents and also 6% uh, above average of weekly fees. Um, the conversion rates are, are above 33% from inquiry all the way through to admission. And also we have a lead time that's reduced under 25 days. So we know that having everything visible to various different members of the team, uh, those that are involved in the actual inquiry process themselves or management are able to overall increase the time, uh, sorry, decrease the time that it takes for an inquiry to, to go through the process, increase overall fees and increase overall customer satisfaction. And we know that dealing with inquiries uh, in a timely manner, uh, keeping on top of, uh, of questions and queries, um, overall gives a much better level of service to uh, potential residents in the same way as the level of service you provide when they become residents. Uh, and that kind of gives you an overview of inquiry management. Now there are reports available of which you can see the average occupancies, occupancy levels, etc. Um, you're able to look at all the inquiry contact details, uh, inquiry performance, etc. So we're able to pull higher level KPI information out to see exactly how inquiries are, are progressing. And again, it can be at home level, it can be at group level. Next is the staffing section of the system. Now, this is, of course, relevant for the commercial team, directors and home managers, but then also anybody who's involved with the rotoring of staff, managing of the rotors, HR functions, training and supervisions, etc. We also have a, a short section on how we extract attendance data out of the system and then transfer that into the likes of a payroll system or perhaps a payroll bureau or accountancy firm. Um, we also cover off uh, the staff portal, so that can be relevant for all staff members, uh, but for the hourly paid uh, care staff, they're able to pick up extra shifts, and for all staff, they're able to book holidays via the system. A major feature of Cool Care 4 is staffing. Um, as we mentioned in the dashboard overview, there are a number of different staffing related uh, widgets on the dashboard uh, showing that there's staff appraisals overdue, uh, we've got training compliance, DBS pins, staff visas, etc, etc. 
Um, however, there's an awful lot more information than just these uh, dashboard widgets. The widgets are really only to highlight outstanding, important things that need to be dealt with. The day-to-day -day is found in the staff area of the system. So we have a list of staff that work at this particular home, which is Oak House. Uh, again, if we were to click on the group, we can rise up the level and look at all staff in the entire company. Uh, today, we're just looking at it from a home perspective. And we have a number of different staff that are in the system. You can type in the search box at the top. It pops up with a staff member. Here we have Thor and we captured a number of different pieces of information that you would need in any normal HR system. So we have uh, the uh, personal information, date of birth, address details, mobile number, um, preferred methods of contact. Um, we have HR related information, so uh, employment details such as the DBS, and this is where the information for the expiry on the widget comes from. Uh, employment, whether on P45, a number of onboarding um, details. Have we yet had the contract back, the handling form, fire form, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Here's your uh, registered professional PIN numbers. Um, we have a little bit of information on staff portal, which we'll come back to in a, in a little bit later. Um, we've got uh, next of kin contacts, Thor is very lonely, he doesn't have anybody. Uh, eligibility, and then we've got forms that we can capture. Now the system is able to capture both the fact that we have the form, so it's a tick list, um, and the, the list of things that you're looking for as tick list of, for employment um, in a care assistant at Oak House are choosable by the home and choosable at group level. So we have all the various different uh, documents that we need, passport information, um, what ID that's been provided to prove that they are who they say they are. Um, and we also do have the ability to upload documents into the system. Now these are just simple uploads. It's a way of storing information. Um, and as you can access CoolCare via any device that's internet, related, uh, internet connected, you could in theory access CoolCare via a work phone take a photo of the um, a passport or a driving license and save it directly into the system directly from the phone no need to scan etc going back we have um, uh, we have the IDs and forms and then we have positions in history and this is where the cool care really sets itself apart from other systems not only do we have the actual position that Thor is currently filling, we also have other positions that Thor is able to do. So um, when we're looking at filling the rotor, we can identify that this is something that Thor does. He is a care assistant um, and he's currently employed. We can move him to being a bank employee. We can also see that he's also able to supervise. He's a team leader, he's a fire marshal, he's a first aider. Very, uh, very flexible gentleman, Thor. Um, but he also has other positions such as domestic, receptionist. He'll work the sleep-in shift as well, and he will work short notice. Now, these have been set up in the system as specific different types of job titles uh, for individuals who are willing to do um, you know, sleep-ins and short notice. So we can also connect um, his pay to his job position. So depending on how you do things in your home, if Thor is filling the role of a care assistant, he gets paid a certain rate. He's a permanent staff member and he's got 45 hours a week. But however, if he steps in as a domestic, you could pay him either the same rate as a care assistant, so the normal rate that he would receive, or a different rate, be it higher or lower than his current role. And that's entirely based off how the rotor works. So uh, other areas we've got is we've got his pay rates. So we can have a look at pay rates for this particular staff position. Now these are drop downs. These are pre-selected by, uh, by uh, yourselves as in what you want to have in here. So a care assistant at Oak House has the following breakdown. Now they can be overwritten, etc. However, these are the breakdowns of, of the, the, the home. Now it could be a case that um, there's different rates in different homes within the group, quite likely if you've got different parts of the country. And it could be that you have different rates between standard um, full-time staff and bank staff. So there's a choice uh, here as well. Now we have a whole plethora of options within pay rates. Now some homes, it's the same rate across the board. Some homes pay different amounts for holidays, for standard hours, if, if staff members are taking training, uh, for bank holidays, Saturdays, Sundays, special days, Saturdays and Sundays that are also uh, national holidays, and then extra hours, etc. So we have a, a whole group of uh, options here um, in which you can select. Now, 
you know, that's a, a lot of flexibility within that pay structure, meaning that you're able to match your current pay structure to the structure that will uh, in future be within Cool Care. You have bank details, of course, uh, and you have uh, you have a breakdown of what the training that Thor has currently completed. Now, this is based off a matrix which is designed to say this is what a care assistant should have. And there's a mandatory breakdown and then there's optional as well. And we can filter by mandatory. Uh, we can filter by achieved, um, et cetera, et cetera, whether it's booked or not booked. Uh, there's your uh, mandatory additional etc so you can really keep on top of what he's individually doing and this data again pulls through to the dashboard to give you an overview a quick instant view of what's actually happening in relation to training um, hopefully that all makes sense um, and then within the system we have the ability to have quite a lot of different options in relation to holidays we can have set amounts of holidays which is a set entitlement which is 20 days for example here um, based on 45 hours a week um, we can have uh, you know what he's currently got available um, and we can also have accruing hours as well so plenty of options there and as a staff member moves from being permanent to non-permanent perhaps like a bank staff or to a different pay grade or perhaps become a senior care assistant for example it could be that the hours that they receive on the days that they receive for the holiday changes so the system intelligently is able to update exactly what's been accrued in different job roles throughout the holiday year so if you do shift to a different position you, the system will automatically calculate how much holiday is outstanding um, very very in, impressive part of the system because it does a lot of calculations instantly that would otherwise take an individual a certain amount of time to have to work out exactly at what point they move to the new grade etc etc hopefully that makes sense in relation to uh, the hr style elements within the system um, what we'll do next is we'll look at timesheets and rotors okay so let's have a look at staffing so i'm going to pop into the staff element have a look at rotors here we have uh, our home which is oak house we've got the shifts laid out um, in a simple to see manner that we've got shortages. So green means we've got four out of four staff needed, 48 hours of 48 hours are all fully covered. Um, here in red, we see we've got two out of three staff, here two out of three, one out of three, and uh, we've only got 19 hours out of the total 31. Different days, different totals, etc., etc. We can see that housekeeping and kitchen, no issues to deal with there. So let's have a look at um, open up the shift and have a look at a little more detail. Now, cool care is almost unique in its respect that it's able to deal with very strict and rigid shifts or very, very flexible shifts. It's entirely up to you how you want to go about rotoring your um, your staff. But here we have a bit of a hybrid in which we've got um, individuals normally allocated to cover these shifts. The entire rotor automatically rolls on a four week rolling basis. So we can scroll forward through time there. But right now we need to address a few gaps in our rotor um, that need to be dealt with in, a sh in short notice. So uh, I'm gonna deal with Sunday here um, and I'm gonna click on the open shift. So I've got a gap. Don't normally have somebody covering it. So it's more of a sort of a floating shift if you like. Um, and I'm gonna click on that and see who's available uh, to go about taking the shift up. I've got all the staff members here that have got a main position as being carer, because that was a caring position. Uh, I've got bank staff uh, here as well, and they're prioritized being at the top. Um, so you maybe perhaps want to choose your bank staff first. And then I've got people with mobile numbers and I can message them directly. So I'm gonna have a little look down here. I've got Thor, he's always good to help out. Apparently he's already on holiday, but he did mention that if any shifts came up, he'd be interested in doing them. He's got a, a bit of a staycation at the moment. He's not going anywhere and he is interested in taking them up. He has, of course, requested holiday. And if he was to say, no, I can't do it, then we, we've got a, a good idea why that might be the case. So I'm going to click on uh, Thor and that's going to send a text message in real time to Thor's mobile. So here we've got his mobile. An actual mobile. Uh, we've got some text messages here. It's popped up. 
Ah, apparently I've been requested to cover, Thor's been requested to cover a shift at Oak House. Now it's a text message and we know that the vast majority of people have got phones that will take texts. Um, and so that's why it's not an app and it doesn't require a smartphone or data to be able to receive this message. So um, I've been asked if I want to cover, I'm going to say why not. And then I'm going to click on can cover. And that's going to send the message back to Cool Care to say that uh, Thor is willing to cover this shift, which is great news. Now, normally I would click on a whole of different shifts and I'd head off and start doing some other work. I'd be clicking on some more shifts, trying to fill my gaps in my rotor. Um, I'll come back later on, see who's uh, offered, see who we've got. Now, ideally what I want is a number of different people who've offered. Um, uh, it, that's why we're sending out these messages. And we know um, from feedback from clients, um, one of which said when they started using the system, they, they hadn't rung anybody for six weeks. The system was that effective. So what we've got is we've got Thor's said, yeah, sure, why not? Great. I'm going to allocate Thor to that um, that particular shift. Get my little mobile back up. Oop, Thor's received a text message and have been allocated. Great. And as you can see, that's flicked from being white to filling in the gap. It was only one out of three, it's now two out of three. Now I'm going to have to go and fill the other late shift, um, but we'll crack on that with a, a, a little bit later. So that's covered that off. That's great. I filled a gap there. Um, another area that we can, uh, the system's extremely effective at helping with is allowing staff to offer shift as well. We can have cover offers that have been given. Now at the moment, I don't have any cover offers. I've just got what we've got. Um, here in the system, but going back to Thor's mobile, I'm able to see uh, exactly um, sort of shifts that I could pick up as uh, as the employee. So I've just clicked on. I'll go back there for a second. I've just clicked on this icon here. Now it is a web page. Looks like an app. Sounds like an app, feels like an app, but it's actually a web page. And the reason we chose to go with a web page is that you can access it from any system. So if, if a, a carer ha doesn't have a smartphone, uh, they have a tablet at home, or perhaps they have a, uh, a an older computer at home, the system looks identical regardless of what, uh, what device you're accessing it with. And again, looking for uh, ease of adoption is the key sort of point here. So I can see as Thor what shifts I've got. I can see that, yeah, there's the one, there, there's the Sunday I've just picked up, brilliant. But I can also see by clicking on available shifts, shifts that I'm able to do. So I can see that there is actually one on Friday. Oh, well, it's today. Oh, okay, that's, that, I could maybe pick that up. Oh no, it's, it's already running, probably not interested in doing that. Um, but maybe I could pick up uh, a Monday and a Tuesday um, and I'll leave it at that for the moment because I was, you know, I don't want to overwork and I've been uh, agreed to do uh, some work somewhere else. Great. So that's gone and um, uh, sort of sent those through. Um, and then I'll see as the user, as the manager back at the, the branch that these, uh, sorry, the branch back at the uh, home, um, what shifts Thor has volunteered for. So I can see the cover requests. There's two cover requests there. And that means I don't have to chase around for these. I've already got somebody who's willing to do it. Now, I might not like Thor. I might think uh, Thor is not as good as uh, somebody else. So I'll take it under advisement that he's interested. Perhaps he's less experienced, but I'm, I may well choose to uh, look at other staff members before I go to Thor. Or alternatively, I might say, do you know what? That's really helpful. You've already volunteered for that one. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take you up on the offer. Now, He's requested it. Just because you request it doesn't mean you've definitely got it. You have to still be allocated to make sure, yeah, I am choosing you out of the perhaps five people that have volunteered for this shift. And I'm sure you just heard a little bing there. Um, there's the text message. Yeah, I've been allocated that shift. That's fantastic. Uh, let's just double check. There it is. It's just appeared in my shifts. There's the Monday shift I've just agreed to do. So as you can see, very, very, very easy to use and it's in real time. Um, so if you do happen to ring in five minutes later, you can say, yeah, actually, I've just I've just offered you a shift. Would you are you interested? Yeah, um, we're going to take you up on that one. Thank you very much. I can see it in the system. So another area that we've got within the uh, staff portal here is the ability to request sh uh, holidays. So um, you can simply go onto the system and say, I'd like to take some holiday off. 
Now, the key point here is we are requesting. We're not demanding, we're not insisting, we're not saying uh, I've definitely got that holiday. We're just saying I would like to take this time off. So I've picked um, uh, a few days there. Uh, are those the days that I meant to pick? Yes, they are. I'm going to just click on next. Uh, I can put a note in. I don't have to. It's not mandatory. Um, going to visit uh, Jane. Um, and that's that. So I can send that off, save it. That's sent. It's closed. And that's the end of me requesting holidays. Now, a great part of the system is by allowing people to request from home, it reduces the overall admin time. We can actually reduce it right down uh, by allowing staff members to do the requests from home. It means that the normal paperwork that's associated with uh, printing out a holiday form, authorizing, uh, making a note on the calendar, making a note on the overall um, uh, allocation of uh, holiday days, uh, taking somebody out of the rotor, uh, then looking to try and fill that gap in the rotor, etc., etc. All of that takes around about 15 minutes per request per staff member. Um, approximately six to seven staff requests, uh, staff absence or holiday requests per year means that you're talking about an hour and a half's work of work uh, every single staff member. And this just simply removes all of that. What we've got here is we've just gone back to my dashboard here. Uh, I've got a calendar action request I have to deal with. I'm Thor's manager. I can see that he's asked for this time off. I'm going to click on it. Just in case I'm not sure what it is, I can float over and it'll tell me. Um, and I can click on it and it'll take me straight into the calendar. There it is glowing, uh, sort of pulsating there saying I'd like to take this time off. I can authorize it here and now, or I can say I can not authorize it. Also, rather uniquely with the system, it does allow you to authorize or decline specific days. So it could be say, look, I can give you the time off, um, but I can't give it all off. Ah, oh, mind you, he's put a note here saying he's going to visit Jane. And I happen to know that Jane uh, is not in the same uh, uh, country and therefore He's probably not going to go down too well by saying, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you uh, the days either side, but I can't give you the one in the middle. So look, I'm going to have to fill that. Um, there's the entitlement. Great. I'm going to save that. You're going to hear. There you go. Funnily enough, I've just got a text message telling me that I've got uh, uh, or my holiday has indeed been authorized. Now, that's that. I can go in there. I can look at my own. Um, uh, calendar actions in my own little my little uh, calendar there and it'll show that there's a holiday pending in in July I can also go back as a manager here looking at this at different um, times that we've authorized off and looking at holidays and requests now an interesting thing with cool care is it automatically turns the holiday request green when it's authorized and red when it's not authorized so it doesn't take it out of the system it doesn't ignore it or if you like discard the form it holds the form in the system and that's very useful because in the event that um, something happens like where Stuart here Stuart happens to go absent on the very day that he happened to request holiday then conversations must be had <clears throat> um, there are other things you can put into the, the calendar whilst we're here um, we can look at absences we can look at training we can click on any day and we can add training we can add absences we can choose who's going to be doing it and performing it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, add the staff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the calendar is very flexible, and of course, because it's online, it means that everybody who's got access to the system can view the calendar um, directly from um, their device, and they can see exactly what's going on at any point in time. Uh, also, on a note on the training, when you're adding people into training, the system does ask you, do you want to take them out? Of the rotor so depending on what the training is it could be that you you've got allocated uh, you know a few hours worth um, of, uh, of lifting training there's no need to take them out of the rotor uh, they're going on a first aid course you may want to take them out of the rotor and you're now going to have to fill that time so very flexible and very much built with uh, caring in mind So we've done our rotors. Uh, people are coming in and out, uh, clocking in and out um, on a daily basis. Uh, we use a very straightforward clocking hardware. It's simplicity itself. All you need to do is plug it in and then we do the rest. Um, the system is designed to 
communicate the clockings and clocking ins and outs via uh, the mobile network so it has a multi-band sim within it and that ensures that clocking is always being captured in the event that there's a breakdown on one network it can flick to another um, we use fobs and that's as we've found over the years the lowest common denominator on acceptance so uh, many staff members reject fingerprint and facial recognition uh, sometimes it's difficult to capture facial and fingerprints and uh, de depending on where it's mounted it can it can be difficult to capture uh, during certain times of the day and we know that fobs are very reliable and that means that your data is very reliable and ultimately that's the most important point in all of this so uh, looking at uh, staff we can have a look at timesheets so people clocking in and out they create uh, a timesheet for themselves and I can look at uh, the timesheets of people who have clocked in and out. If I want, I can click this to all staff members. Uh, of course, I'm only really interested in what's happened. Now, our system is very intelligent in the way in which it works. It applies your pay rules to the shifts. And that means that if somebody is meeting the normal pay rules, so in other words, uh, sort of coming in, they're not overly early or overly late, then the system will snap them to shift. And that will say, OK, you may have come in five minutes early, but we're not going to pay you from nine. Uh, sorry, from five to nine. We're going to pay you from nine. That's the way in which our our pay rules work. You may have left 15 minutes late, but we're going to pay you up until five and no longer. And that means that the system automatically snaps that person to shift. Uh, that shift is blue and there's no further action required. Now, it takes a little bit of uh, of um, uh, consultative uh, work to ensure that we're getting your payrolls exactly the way that you want them uh, and we put that into the system for you should you change it we can help you change that in the future but it's very easy to do yourselves now the system's also going to identify certain scenarios where people have not um, uh, snapped to shift and snapping to shift is a, is a very efficient way of working we know that uh, um, from research over 20 million uh, shifts have been snapped uh, um, so far with cool care and that's saving over 2.7 million in pounds um, average savings around about 55,000 per operator and we know that that's uh, around about four pound 95 per person per shift is being if you like pruned off the front and pruned off the end of shifts um, but there are also scenarios when people have come in and they're not coming on shift so here we have a scenario where we've got orange not snap to shift what's happened here well it could be uh, i'm the home manager and say yes i know what happened here i asked them to come in i didn't actually put them in the rotor uh yeah i'm going to authorize that yeah I, i'm i'm wrong i'm good with that and that's turned from orange to green it could be that we manually pop something in so we've got a maintenance worker here they've come in uh, I asked them to, uh, and they've not really clocked in and out. So I've just manually popped them in there. I've said why they why they've come in. Um, now there's the, the there are lots of options that you can have in drop downs here. But Darren is a maintenance worker. Yeah, I'm going to authorize that as well. It could be that you have authorization at a different level. Could be that you have uh, uh, home managers filling in um, the manual part and then finance has to sign off in it or a senior manager has to sign off on it. Uh, and therefore we can't proceed until these are all green. They can't have any pinks or oranges sitting. But ultimately, as you can see, the vast majority are blue in this uh, in this timesheet, meaning the system has done it all for you. And we know that this has a massive time saving on administration of manual timesheets. No need to, to calculate how many hours are actually worked when the system does it automatically in real time uh, we can compare to rotor we can lock the shift and many many homes do do this so as you've moved through the shift uh, in the weeks let's say you're paying monthly as you get to the end of the week we have a time in the diary to to review what's going on we close that down and we lock it and then we can't go back and alter it we can also export these timesheets out in the event that you want to have a conversation with anybody about timesheets etc uh, uh, etc et hopefully that makes sense on timesheets uh, and what we'll do now is we'll quickly look at another area uh, that's not quite a timesheet but it's agency ledger so in the scenario that we had earlier we had a situation where we had some gaps in our in our um, shift patterns we wanted to fill them 
we're able to go down the list and request everybody to, to, to if they'd be interested in taking the shift up. Let's say we can't get anybody. Let's say it's too short notice. Well, then we may want to use agency cover. So clicking on agency, um, we have drop downs that are created by you uh, when we set the system up of the agency names that you use. That means that you are only using the correct agencies um, and there's nothing sort of outside of the plan uh, being done by any any managers. Um, you've got agency company. Uh, we were short on staff. The name of the, the agency uh, staff member that's coming in. We've got uh, Sophie's going to come in. We've had her before. She's, she's very good. And we're covering for Barry. Barry uh, has uh, called in sick. Short notice. Again. And we're going to save that. Now it's very clear in the in the uh, rotor that we've got cover here in in uh, in brown, and it's agency cover. Now the person hasn't come in yet as agency, so they're not created a timesheet per se. Um, but we do have that already recorded in the agency ledger, saying that they're going to be coming in. We've already had people come in, so they've completed that, and they've received a pay, and they've got worked hours and transportation costs, etc. Uh, you can directly add in here rather than via the, the rotor if you want. Um, directly in, yeah, we actually had to get short notice. I want to add to the agency ledger that uh, we had cover, and again, who are we covering for is very important. Uh, which staff member are we covering for? And that could be part of a one-to-one -one discussion if you're continuously using agency for the same staff member. We can export that data as well. Uh, and that means overall we've got uh, an agency ledger running in parallel with our timesheet and payroll data. On the subject of payroll, um, we are able to run a report on what's happened in relation to the uh, past month. So we can go back and we can view a report and this is automatically going to generate a payroll report. Um, and this is visible uh, as you as an individual, you can read it. Uh, it says who they are, um, what, they're, uh, what they've worked, etc. Got one here, there we go. Uh, our, uh, Andrea has worked, she's standard senior care work. She did some extra, but we've got a pay rate missing. So that needs to be uh, updated. And she did some training. Now it can be that the pay rate for uh, for Standard work as a senior carer could be different to training, um, uh, or it could be that the extra is a different rate, etc., etc. So there's plenty of options there. Creates all these, uh, all these, um, uh, all the data is being collated and put in one place. We can also export the payroll data uh, into a system. So, for example, it could be uh, into Sage or into Zero, um, of which we're going to create uh, a an Excel spreadsheet or CSV. And that's got data that we can export out. Now, this configuration could be exactly how you want it to be received by the other system. So it could be that you're uh, you're using payroll numbers here. You've got names. It could be that you choose to not have names or senior carers. This data, if it's not necessary to go into the other system, you can leave it out from an export perspective. You can have pay rates. Uh, they could be actual pay rates and the actual hours, or it could be uh, so pay rate is 10.5 is £10.50, or it could be that you're using a code. So it could be pay scale three, et cetera, et cetera. So it's entirely up to you how you might want to set that up. Um, and then the data can go seamlessly without any human interaction directly into the payroll system. If you use agency, uh, so an outside agency, so a payroll bureau, for example, then um, it has worked in the past that, sta uh, that homes have approached the payroll bureau, asked them how they import it, because normally it's a certain amount of manual uh, inputting. Um, and then the, we have matched that as an input, and then it can just go directly into their system, thus saving time, sometimes saving money on the payroll bureau costs. Um, that's pretty much concludes everything in relation to payroll. We then have a whole slew of reports available to be printed out in relation to staff. Um, key ones that are very regularly run, especially if you're onboarding staff on a regular basis, those that are missing information, uh, any ex outstanding training that needs to be dealt with. Um, from a, from a uh, finance perspective, you can look at all the hours, budget versus plan, timesheet totals, staff hour analysis, etc. And then you're able to create your own custom reports. 
So virtually everything within the system that can be reported on can be reported against something else. You just create that report and it can be punched out as PDF or Excel. So a lot of flexibility there. And then finally, in relation to training, there's a training matrix that keeps on top of uh, the, exactly what's been happening in relation to training for all the staff members. We've got overall totals. Um, you can look at uh, all the staff positions individually or all of them. You can look at whether or not there's, there's mandatory or additional. Now, we've got mandatory and additional here at the moment. So if we're looking at mandatory, it's not quite about a, as bad as a, a point there. It was 17% before, now it's 70%. We can see exactly what's going on um, with all the staff members. Um, and then we've got color coding to remind us exactly what uh, these mean. So it's green is valid. Expiring in the next two months, we need to get that booked in. And then we've got already expired. Uh, searching down the list here, you can see uh, whether or not individuals should have something, uh, when it's going to expire, et cetera, et cetera. We've added COVID vaccinations in here um, because it's uh, an easy way of tracking that sort of information. But of course, all of these choices are yours. Um, so whatever you want to put into the, into the system and track it, then that's exactly what you can put in. Um, and that's pretty much it for staff. Now we're going to look at the final section of the system, which is residents and the invoicing and finance aspect of a residence being within the home. Now, when an individual moves from being an inquiry and they're admitted, much of this data is pre-populated. And then uh, this is how we create the invoices, uh, the fee contracts are within this section. So anybody who's involved in the sort of financials um, will find this section of interest. Uh, the final area of cool care that we're going to look at now is residents. So very much in a similar way in which you can capture information on staff members, you can also capture information on residents. Um, so having a look into a resident record, here we've got Jane. Uh, we can see when she was admitted, we can see her weekly fee, which home she's in. Um, we've got dependency level, a dementia uh, care type, and then we've got COVID status. Um, that's just been recently added, obviously. Uh, and then we've got a breakdown of her details, what room she's in. We can change her room. We can see her room history, um, general information. We've got the visa there as well, should that be uh, an issue. Um, and previous occupation, other few little bits of details. Admission and discharge. Um, so a little information about sort of when we were admitting her. Um, and little bits and bobs that need to be dealt with uh, in relation to perhaps her previous time and where she was staying previously. Um, we've got contacts, so we've got family member, uh, contact type, and then details. So we can click on that and kind of go in and see a little bit more, see how they prefer to be contacted, uh, the general information that you might want to capture. Again, similar to um, uh, staff members, you can record documents. Um, and they can be saved into the system if you should, should you know, so, fear, so, uh, so wish. Uh, general notes can be made, um, a room history, so various different rooms she's stayed in. And of course, very re relevant at the moment is uh, any absences that she's had from the home, uh, what's happened with those when they were, what she was doing, um, uh, you know, for example, going to a wedding. Um, but probably the biggest area that uh, that uh, makes a, a, a incredible difference is the intelligent billing uh, within Cool Care. So we're able to store fee contracts, and the fee contracts are uh, based on local authorities. So they're kind of pre-built, pre-populated within the system. Changing that uh, local authority, uh, you know, or setting up a new new. Uh, uh, resident um, you pick from a pick list so that can be centrally controlled um, and again because this is an online system it could be that it's been dealt with in a home it could be dealt with at head office um, we can see the breakdown of the fee contributions and see what's going on with those um, and then you know click into it for a little bit further detail um, of this fee contract so it's repeating uh, in certain ways repeating on day ones when it started etc etc um, you have overrides, there's the local authority. Um, and then probably the most common issue or very our common issue is contribution changes. So the local authority comes back to you and says, look, um, we may have been paying this, but we've had an assessment, it's an all completed and we've got a new rate. Uh, this is the new rate uh, and it's effective from a certain point in the time. Uh, and that would normally have to be uh, put together and calculated using a spreadsheet or a calculator. Um, 
and then uh, that has to be sort of pulled through for all the time that the resident's been there since it's changed and also making adjustments for times that they're absent if they're paying at a different rate. Now, uh, with the system, it just automatically applies all of those contribution changes. It's applied it, it's now done, and then that will get pulled through automatically, notifying the uh, other payer, because this is a, to a top up, that there is a difference in what they've been paying, uh, a certain amount so, uh, overdue, and that gets added to an invoice. We've got ad hoc adjustments you can add in, um, and various different descriptions that you can choose and then uh, your account details of who's paying it. You can also set the system so that it's going to bill certain individuals for certain things. So for example, uh, son number one may be paying uh, the overall uh, top ups. Son number two may pay for billable extras. Um, again, all pulled through the system, uh, all intelligently creating invoices. We've got a ledger account, just keeping on top of bits and bobs that uh, um, that, that perhaps money's been put aside for Jane, and then you can draw down against it for various different things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, kind of the key area that uh, most uh, finance individuals are interested in is the invoicing. So we can uh, set up the system to just run invoices off, um, and we're going to look at the actual contracts and billable extras. Uh, you can have different cutoffs, etc., depending on the um, uh, you know, how you set up your home. Um, and then we're able to just run off uh, some reports uh, of fees that need to be paid. So we can do a pre-process report, and that's very similar to the way in which we did the um, uh, payroll data. You can run off a quick report and then kind of eyeball it, if you like, have a look at, see what's going on. This is the invoices that we're intending and sending out. So you can kind of get in there, okay, right, you know, that's not, it's got something red, we need to deal with that. Um, Moving through it, we've got, yep, Brian Clough's permanent. They've got a contract. Yeah, that looks about right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Made up of various different elements. Um, all of that data is being pulled through onto invoices, which can be uh, printed and sent or it can be emailed. And also, um, we can then move on to batch processing or processing all of the invoices. So we can just pick them all and then we'll process the whole lot. And that's going to create them uh, to be ready to be sent out. And then we also are able to transfer the data once we've, we've processed these uh, over to um, our accounting system. So we're going to be able to input that data into the accounting system um, in order to reconcile it when the money then comes in. Uh, we can see what it's, uh, it's allocated against. Notice you've got little flags here. Um, and again, because this is not real data, um, there's lots and lots of flags in which certain things are not adding up to the right amounts. Now, it could be a case that you say, well, hang on, before I do that, I'm just going to check um, rather than running that, I'm going to have a quick look and see if there's any missing contracts. We can run a report on that. Just pulled up a little spreadsheet there just down at the bottom. Um, that's a previous thing. So just got to flick over two seconds. There we go. See if there's any missing contracts. Yeah, you know, it's quite a lot actually. Right. Yeah. Okay. We have to have a word with um, the uh, the person doing the admissions, um, as we've got we're expecting certain amounts, and this is where we're at. So yeah, we need to get into it, uh, and that's really relevant if you've got um, uh, changes in care types or permanency, etc., uh, etc. Et so um, we're able to kind of run that report off, uh, and really there shouldn't be anything on this report. Um, that you don't already know about. Um, fee discrepancies, again, you can do analysis of invoices here. Um, residents by funding, so again, see exactly how your how your overall occupancy is being made up, um, et cetera, et cetera. You've, you've got resident ledgers, and there are other types of resident information you want to run off. There's a fire list. And as with uh, staffing, you also have absences, and you run a report on those and custom reports. Again, there's a custom report generator of which you can create your own custom reports um, and put those together and say, yeah, I want to create a new custom report and then I'm going to call it uh, custom report. Uh, and then I can pick whether which of the two different areas I want to report from and then start to bill it. So I say, I want to include uh, service user room history, and then I'm going to add in a column and then I add in a field. And then I just create that custom report till such time that I get to a point 
where I've got a report I want. I can keep, I can make as many as I want. I keep testing it. Um, and then once I've made that report, it appears in this customer report down the bottom. So the system enables you to get the information you want out of the system in a really easy manner. If at any point you're unsure how to do anything, then of course you can contact Cool Care and we're able to support you uh, over the phone or via our talk messages. So you can message us, etc. And it means that the system overall is not only is it easy to use, but it's easy to get into the granular detail of without any great issues. Uh, when individuals sign up to Cool Care, we, uh, we always recommend that you take training from us. Uh, average training per uh, one to two bed home is around about three days. Sorry, one to two beds. So one to two bed sites, two sites uh, is uh, about three days of training uh, broken down into 90 minute sections where we train the different parts of the home uh, as in staff members how to use the system. Ultimately, carers don't really need any training uh, because they wouldn't be interacting with the system other than through the staff portal and that's pretty self-explanatory uh, but we tend to train uh, those individuals dealing with the rotors uh, dealing with the timesheets um, interested in the overall occupancy and inquiry management and obviously anybody who's dealing with finance and invoicing get training i uh, hope you find that's useful uh, thanks very much for listening if you'd like to know more about cool care don't hesitate to get in touch